It's not just the events in Palestine over the next generation. But Jesus, as he explains to them these events, are beginning to describe what would be occurring all time that comes to where we are today because, friends, there's people today. Somewhere in the globe today, someone's asking when. When will Jesus come back? When will we see his kingdom? When will the evil of this world end? When? What will be the sign that we'll see Jesus coming? How will we know when that will be? What will be the sign that we have reached this promised eternity? See, that question's there too. And Jesus is addressing them because the events that happened in Israel mirror what will happen worldwide and globally as we look to when Jesus' return will come. The friends, there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be nations rising against nations. There will be evil that will just flood all society. We'll see you break down the basic principles of God put in place of marriage and family. How we're to relate to one another. You'll find that it'll be very rare that someone would really give their life for another. We'll see all the things that start to take And what is that? Listen, friends. That's just the sign of the birth pains beginning. Every day we see it unfold as we look at our news, as we look at our media, as we look at our resources, as we look at the events of the day, the week, the month. We see it unfold. And this is unfolded before, and it will unfold tomorrow. Because it's going to happen. Jesus is coming again. His words to the disciples that they write about the fall of the temple, which was their mind. It's also opening a window, so a little window in to see what will happen. Those are the places. We'll see famines and earthquakes of all sorts. Some caused by natural phenomena. Some caused by man's misuse and man's destruction. And we see that all around us, friends. And again, says that's the beginning. You'll see the condition of the faithful. And for those we don't have to look forward to see that. We can look at the news every day so we're Christians all around the globe. Even in places that once had some relative symbols of peace is in total uproar because of the cross of Christ. Because of the news scriptures that Jesus has coming. We see it all around. And our brothers and sisters around the globe, many are sitting in cells and chains. Many are facing their death. Many are facing unthought of abuse and judgment. It just blows our mind. But friends, it's happening. It's going to continue to happen. It's going to escalate because Jesus is coming. There's going to be many that walk away from the faith. And friends, in this pandemic, one of the things that you think about the things that I've seen in polls and articles says that many who used to go to church won't come back. When we begin to come back into the buildings, as we begin to engage worship and swear to minister like we used to, there will be many that won't come back. But this will get worse. Friends, it's going to happen. And you know what? It's just a sign. Maybe some that are going to walk away from their faith because it wasn't making Jesus. It's faith in what a parent believed. Or faith in what a teacher believed. Or faith in what a preacher believed. It wasn't in the Word of God and the truth of God's Word. There will be those who walk away. Even some that looked so much like us. But because their hearts were not rooted in Jesus Christ, because their faith was not founded in the Word of God and the truth of that Word, they're going to walk away. They're going to lead many with them as they go off into all sorts of false teachings and philosophies and isms. And friends, we're watching it. It's happening. But again, Jesus is not telling the disciples these things for them to get their calendar out and to say, oh, it's this day and it's this hour. No. He was telling them so they would be what? Ready. 
and they would sense the urgency that others need to know. And they would not sit back and wait for somebody else to go. But they themselves would go to those who are yet outside the ark of salvation to come and enter into Christ. To share the story, to give the invitation to come to faith in Jesus Christ. To not trust in the ends of this world. Not to trust in the strength of some person. Not to trust in the, the success of an organization but to come to Jesus Christ and to walk with Him daily, passionately with Him. Jesus' words about what was to come, what those signs of the times were to be, was not for us to put our calendar and to set dates, but it was for us to realize that the day is coming, and it will come. And every day we see that there's a war, a rumor of war. Every day we see a natural disaster. Every day we hear of somebody teaching some great thing and people following. Every day those events take place. Realize, hear, know, Jesus is coming. And when he comes, he'll come as described. He'll come in a moment, in an instant. And he'll call forth all those who are faithful to him in their hearts. Who know him and walk with him daily. Who know him as their personal Lord and Savior. And those who don't will be left behind. As we begin Lent, friends, it's a season that we walk as a church, we walk as believers to center us, to focus us, to remind us Jesus is coming. He said He would, and He will. And when He comes, it'll come quickly. And only those ready only those who have made the decision to follow Him will be a part of that great gathering. Friends, this morning, two questions. Are you ready? He hasn't come yet, but He's coming. Could be today. Might be tomorrow. Might be in our lifetime. Might not. But I'll assure you this. If He doesn't come, you will die. And when you die, you will stand before a holy and just God. And there will be no time to deal with our sin then, friends. It's too late. Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? Because He is coming. The signs are there. You want a sign? Look in the paper. Look on the news. Read a little bit of history, even just in the recent months. It's there, friends. And what does he say? When you see these, remember, it's the birth pains. It's the labor. It's going to happen. It starts. You don't know how long it's going to last or how severe it may be, but you know it will. Be ready. If you're not ready, then today I plead with you. And I invite you through the God to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because only those who know him will see him in heaven and know him and spend eternity with him. Second question. As a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got that first question down. Yes, I'm ready and I'm waiting and I'm looking and I'm anticipating. And I can't wait. If it's today, praise the Lord. If it's tomorrow, okay. If it's in my lifetime, wonderful. Got a question for you. What difference is it making? See, it's not just about us getting to heaven. That's step one. Christ came to redeem and save us. But then He's commissioned us as His followers. As those who have hearts sold out to Him. Those who are not divided between this world and Him, but are totally out to Him. He has a mission for us. And the mission is take it into the highways and byways of life. Take it into the place where you play, into the place where you work, into the place where you go, where you spend time, among family, among friends, among neighbors. Take it out. Because only through the blood of Jesus Christ will any be saved. And unless they hear it, they won't know. So are you going? Are you telling? Are you living out that faith every day? It's the only way people will come to the kingdom. It's the only way people will be ready. 
and His call to you and His call to me as followers, as those who are in the Ark of Salvation, is not just to sit there waiting for the day to come, but be engaging every moment of every breath of every day, proclaiming, sharing, living, so the world can see and hear and begin to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Committed to Him and committed to see that message go forth. Because verse 14, friends, what did he say there to his disciples? And this gospel of the kingdom. That's what we get to tell the world, friends. We get to tell them good news. Sin grips this world. Sin grips your life. And you can't escape it. But Jesus has come. He is God the Son. He left the portals of heaven to come and live here on earth confined to a human body, to one place at one time, at one moment, to live his life perfectly obeying the law, so that when he died, he died not a sinner, but one who was perfect, so that his righteousness could be applied to me and applied to you and applied to any who would believe, so that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. See, that's the good news. That's the gospel. And we get to tell them, you know what? He's waiting right now. You get to come. He wants you. His Spirit's calling you. Hear His voice. Hear Him knock at the door. Remember what John wrote. If we just open that door, what? He comes in. He comes in to abide. He comes in to stay. He comes in to assure us of eternity. See, we get to tell that good news to the world around us. The good news of the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. And it says what? It will be preached what? To the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. Friends, we're getting closer to that. You know, it's amazing in my lifetime how much this little thing's impacted stuff. People can see an event happening somewhere in the world, anywhere in the world, and almost instantaneously on this device or other devices like this. We're getting closer and closer to that day, friend, when all the world will hear. And you might want to think, well, some far off place they won't. My experience in Africa a few years back, out in the middle of nowhere, you've got a shepherd taking a flock of goats or a flock of sheep or a herd of cattle and he's got his cell phone while he's walking it like blew my mind of all places wasn't even electricity where we stayed most of the day it wasn't consistent but that shepherd had his phone and he was in contact with the all the news of the world friends we're getting closer it's not too much longer before all the world will have the chance to hear and when that comes what's he say I'll be back. So my second question, friend, if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, are you letting it make a difference? Are you being that ambassador of the good news? Because Peter tells us that Jesus is waiting. God is waiting for one more soul. He's patient with us, as us believers, that we'll be taking that message out so all can hear, because his desire is that none would be lost. But salvation is based upon whether you've made a, re a decision for Jesus. Our Lord Jesus, our Savior, is waiting. He's waiting today. He's waiting for those who are not yet into salvation, not yet in the ark, to come in. Just like the days of Noah. Noah preached his heart out. Nobody came. But he preached it out anyhow. We get one more chance to announce that good news. He's waiting. And friends, he's waiting for us to fulfill the commission he gave us. It didn't change. Matthew 28, still the commission today. Go. Make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and don't miss this part, teach them. Disciple them. Engage them. Walk alongside them, helping them discover and understand the truth of God's Word so they can then go out and do what? Make disciples. Seeing them baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what? Teaching them. So what? 
They can go out. See, it's God's plan. I remember sitting at Perchett Valley several years ago, and the speaker, and I apologize, I don't remember his name, and he wrote a book, and I can't even think of the book for sure right offhand. But I thought of it this morning early. It has impacted me. He had done mathematically and showed that if every person today who claimed to know Jesus Christ according to the polls, if each one of those would win one a year, and that those two would go out the next year to win four, and those four would go out the next year to win four more to be aid and so forth exponentially, he had shown that in less than nine years, every person in the globe would hear the gospel. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And Jesus said, when that word goes out, what? I'm coming. Are you ready? The Lord is coming. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the chance to be able to read those questions and answers that you gave the disciples that day. Because, Lord, we've got the same question we often ask. When? When will we see? When will this happen? When will this take place? Because, God, we want to know. But you told us we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not going to know the date or the hour, and we'll get into that next week. But what you have told us is when you see these things occur, and we're seeing them every day, we need to know you're coming. And we need to be ready. And those we care about need to be ready. So, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters today, those who know you, I pray our hearts would burn with passion for you and a desire to tell the world the good news about you and the kingdom and your plan and how you redeem us and save us. The Lord, it would just be a part of who we are. It would come out and just as we walk through life. That we'll be faithful to impart that good news to all that you bring into our lives. And Lord, I pray today that if there's any, whether here in this parking lot or maybe watching online, that need to know you, that has not yet put their faith in you, Lord Jesus. Not faith in Emmanuel Baptist Church, not faith in me as a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or a deacon or whomever, but faith in you, Lord Jesus, and in their own faith, not mom and dad's, not brother or sister, but their own faith, that today they would hear you call their voice, hear your voice call their name one more time. And Lord, I pray they'll come. You're waiting. You desire us to come to you. May you work in our lives and bring about refreshment, renewal, revival for your people and evangelism of the lost. To your glory, honor, and praise I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Within your heart 
till the bite. Time after time he has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Time after time, he has waited before, and now he's waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to go now. I pray as we go through this week that we'll remember those words. We'll remember the words Jesus shared. We'll continue to be in his word. I invite you to continue to read in 24 and 25 of Matthew. And as we come together next week, I pray that you'll be able to be a part of that time of worship. Just as a reminder of those here in the parking lot, please don't move your car until you're dismissed. We've got cords up here we have to watch. I thank you for coming. I pray God blesses you and gives you an opportunity this week, this first full week of Lent, an opportunity to tell somebody about your faith in Jesus. God bless you.